can I boys and girls? It's a very common thought, but have you added to that? That you know, why you pay tax on? Acronym for value added tax. As I already said, that is the acronym for value added tax. Do you know that? Tax that is charged whenever goods are sold or services are rendered by a registered VAT vendor. Charges the VAT. Business enterprise registered as a VAT vendor, we will talk about that a little bit later, that sells goods or renders services is required to charge its customers VAT. It's important to recognize that that VAT does not belong to the business, it belongs to stock. Now, what is a registered VAT vendor? A registered VAT vendor is a vendor, vendor is a business enterprise that is registered for VAT. There are two categories of registration. The first one is the compulsory one, that means you do not have a choice, you have to, and that is any enterprise whose annual income exceeds more than one million and that is per year. It's required to register it as a bad vendor. The second category is voluntary. Voluntary means you can choose. Any enterprise whose annual income is less than one million may voluntarily choose to register as a bad vendor. Provided that the annual income is in excess, meaning more than 50,000. That means if your annual income is 50, or less per year, you may not register as a VAT vendor. Now, how is VAT calculated? VAT is charged at 15% currently of the normal selling price of the goods and services, and this rate is known as the standard rate, meaning the 15% is the standard rate of VAT that is charged. However, certain goods and services that are exempt from that, meaning there is no VAT charge on it and it is set by law. Also, be charged as a 0% for certain goods and services and that are called zero rate. So that means the 15%, which is the standard rate, we have the goods and services that is exempt and then we have a zero rate. Now, the zero rate is usually on very basic food items, and that is to prevent hardship to poor people. So, these items is then rated at a zero rate. Exempt items, let's look at examples of items that is exempt from tax. Please note, it's not the same as the zero rate. It's different. First is financial services, the rental of a private residence, accommodation of people by road or rail, educational services when supplied by the state. Then zero rated items, these are charged back but just at a zero rate, so they are different from exempt. Brown bread, maize products and rice, milk, milk powder and milk blend, fruit and vegetables, lentils, dried beans and legumes, vegetable oil, eggs and pilchards, export of movable goods, petrol and diesel, international transport of passengers and goods. Now, who pays the VAT? Since VAT is included in the selling price or service price charged to the customer, it is ultimately the customer who pays the VAT. You, when you go and buy the goods, you are the one paying the VAT. It follows that whenever you purchase something from a registered VAT vendor, you are also paying VAT. The VAT is collected by the business enterprise on behalf of the South African Revenue Services, in short, SARS. 
let's look at some examples. Closed shared lead races are registered by vendor wants to generate an income of 20 rand per haircut. How much must they charge a customer for a haircut? Now you need to understand that 20 rand is what they want to put into their pocket. That is what they want to. So they cannot charge that to the customer because they need to charge the customer. So they now need to add that to that 20 rand. So it's the 20 rand times 15%, which is 3 rand. Means they need to charge the customer 23 rand. The business charges 23 rand. That's what the customer pays. And that will now include the 3 rand. So 20 rand of that 23 rand will be income for the business. And 3 rand will be VAT that will be paid over to SARS. Another example, close shared hairdressers purchase a product from Golden Glow Hall Furnace for 1,550. How much back did close shared hairdressers pay? They paid uh, 1,150, which includes 50% discount. So here's the basis of the formula by taking the known amount, times it by the unknown percentage, divided by the known percentage. Now, the 1,150 includes 15% VAT, which means that is equal to 115%. So the known percentage here is 115. What do we want to know? We want to know how much VAT did they pay. And VAT is 15%. So the unknown one goes on top. So we take the known amount, 1,150 times 15%, that is what we want to know, divided by the percentage of the known amount, which is 150, and that equals 150. They paid 150 rand VAT. First, that it raises is the customer in this example, and they have to pay VAT. Golden Glow wholesalers receive 1,150, of which 1,000 is an income for them, and 150 is VAT that is collected on behalf of SARS. That brings us to input tax and output tax. A business enterprise can be both a payer of VAT and a charger of VAT. So you pay VAT when you purchase goods and you charge VAT when you sell goods. The first input tax and output tax are used to distinguish between these two types of VAT. Input tax is paid by the business enterprise when they acquire goods or services. When they buy goods and services, they pay VAT and we call that input VAT. The input tax is included in the cost of the goods or the services. Output tax is charged by the business enterprise when it sells goods or renders services. The price that the customer is charged for the goods or services includes the output VAT. Input tax is what the business paid on their purchases. And the output tax is the VAT that the business charged on their sales. Let's look at another example. There are a list of transactions and let's see how that. Transaction number one, it bought stationery for 342, which includes 42 rand VAT. So we bought, which means we paid, and whenever we pay, it is input tax. So the 42 rand will be input tax. Number two, sold golf balls for 57 rand, including 7 rand VAT. We are selling, and therefore it is output tax. Three, golf trading inventory golf shirts for 2,850, including 350 VAT. Okay, so we buy, we pay, therefore, so it is going to be input tax. Four. Sold a set of gold cups for 6,840, including 840 VAT. We have, we have 
cross back and that means it is output back. Place the telephone bill 855, including 105 rand back. Again, we paid, and that makes it input back. So, in total, we have paid 497 rand back, and we have charged 847 rand back. So, what is now payable to SOS? What VAT is payable to SOS? The essence of VAT is that tax is collected throughout the production and distribution chain. In order to avoid double taxation, paying tax twice, any registered VAT vendor within the chain claims his input tax against his output tax. Again, input tax is a tax that he has paid, output tax is a tax that he has charged. So that means you can subtract your input tax from your output tax and you only pay over the difference. In other words, the amount of VAT that must be paid to SARS by the business enterprise is calculated by subtracting the input tax paid from the output tax charged. In equation 4, the VAT payable to SARS equals the output tax minus the input tax. So, if we use the results in the table of the previous example, how do we calculate the VAT that needs to be paid over by the forest car shop to source. It will then be output tax minus input tax. The output tax was 847. The input tax was 497. So 350 needs to be paid over to 